I have attended many ordinations. And for the past 23 years, ordained almost 300 deacons and priests. And today, the sixth bishop. But this is the first time I will ordain a man on a wheelchair. We can apply to Guinness Book of World Records. As you know, recently, Bishop Rafi thought that he was Carlos Yulo. So he jumped like a gymnast and broke his leg. The question needed to be asked, shall we proceed? And the question needed an answer, yes, we will. But the question was, but he is disabled. But the answer was, is there any bishop who is not disabled? All of us, all of us, your bishops, were disabled when we were chosen. We were handicapped when we were ordained. Not only bishops and priests and deacons, we were all born handicapped. And in theology, we call that original sin. So Bishop Rafi comes to receive ordination as a handicapped bishop. But like all bishops, he is handicapped, he is disabled. But with St. Paul, he says, I am disabled, but I am able by the strength of God. I am weak, and in my weakness, I am strong. I am strong with the strength of God. In other words, Bishop Rafi will go to the mountains of the Cordilleras, not with his legs, but with the legs of Jesus. He is going to preach, not with his lips, but with the lips, with the heart, with the mind of Jesus. But you know, the awesome good news above all of this is, God knows we are handicapped, and God knows we will still meet accidents by our foolishness in the future, even after ordination. But beyond that, God says, even if you're handicapped, even if you are disabled and your disability can worsen by your sins, by your age, nevertheless, the Lord says to you, but you are mine and I have chosen you even before time began and that even your handicap can make me change my mind in choosing you. We, your bishops, your pastors, are all handicapped and disabled. And if we are able to serve you in our disability and weakness and woundedness, it is all by the grace of God. But Bishop Rafi goes to Baguio at 64 years old. He is, in fact, older than me. 64 is young or old, Relatively speaking, Moses was called when he was 80 years old. Abraham was called when he was 75. Bishop Rafi is called at 64. So he's still young. But he carries with it the wisdom of 64 years. The wisdom of almost 40 years in priestly ministry. He goes to the Church of Baguio not only as a handicapped apostle, successor of the apostles, he goes to the Church of Baguio as an elder, made wiser by time, made wiser by experience, made wiser by the difficulties 
by the darkness that he has been through. Bishop Rafi goes there as an elder, not because of his age of 64. He goes to Baguio as an elder because he has been made wiser by the Lord. It is not human wisdom that he brings. It is the wisdom of the Lord that he brings to his assignment as shepherd of the church of Baguio. He is an elder man. And clergy and people of Baguio, please take care of our gift to you. We are... We are making a sacrifice in letting him go and leave the Archdiocese of Singe in the Gupan. And I really mean it. Please treat your bishop well because the church, the Holy Father, has sent you a good shepherd, an elder among you, who will be an example for the Lord's flock. But the contradiction, my dear brothers and sisters, the contradiction is, even if Bishop Rafi is an elder by age, he is actually a baby by ordination. Today, he becomes the youngest bishop of the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines by age. But what is the gift of being young? What is the gift of being a child? What is the gift of being a teenager? Old men see visions. Young men dream dreams. So Bishop Rafi goes to Baguio as a dreamer among dreamers. He brings with him the youth of his episcopacy. He brings with him the grace of the Lord, who is the source of the joy of our youth. Bishop Rafi goes as an elder. He goes as a youth, as a child, dreaming dreams and ready to make those dreams come true. But there will come a time when Bishop Rafi will grow old as a bishop and he will grow even more, more elderly as a bishop. But whether old or young, handicapped or abled, the most important duty of a bishop like Bishop Rafi is to be an example. Be an example to the flock, not lording it over those assigned to you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you will win for yourself the unfading crown of glory. In your handicap, be an example. In your elder wisdom, be an example. In your youthful dreams, be an example. Because... The Lord sends us to be a witness, to be a martyr. I hope they do not make you a martyr in Baguio. But do not be afraid. If the Lord calls you for martyrdom, say yes. Because that is what the red of the apostles signify. You are called to be a martyr. You're called to be an example for the Lord's flock. And beyond being an example, you're called to be Jesus. Hear the words of St. Francis of Assisi. Go and preach the gospel. Use words if necessary. Talk if necessary. Because the most important component of preaching is in being an example. Listen to the words of St. Paul VI. The world does not need teachers. And paraphrasing him, the Lord does not need bishops and priests. The world, the church, needs examples, witnesses. And if teachers and bishops and priests are credible in the world today, it is because we have first been witnesses. Bishop Rafi 
it is not late because the Lord does not count the time and the Lord does not keep a clock. You are appointed bishop at the right time according to the Lord's time. Go to Baguio as a handicapped successor of the apostles, as all of us are, but able by the power of God. Handicapped, but you can walk, you can run, you can jump with the legs, with the heart, with the fire of God. Go there as an elder and teach them from your experience. Go there as a child, dreaming dreams, wanting those dreams to come true. But go there as a martyr, ready to lay down your life for the Lord. Because there is no greater love than to die for your beloved. Bishop Prophe, we are losing a good priest in the church of Lingen de Gupan. But we know Baguio has a good bishop in you. We look forward to many years of shepherding the church. And at the sunset of our lives, when the good shepherd's voice is heard once again, come home. May the same voice that you heard, come follow me, be the same voice that you will hear. Welcome, good and faithful shepherd, enter your everlasting reward.